Hey, sixth graders, are you ready for lesson one of illustrative math? Um, this is just tiling the plate. It's just giving us an idea on how to figure out what would tile something and what wouldn't tile something or um, how area will affect it, okay? So this one's just asking us really quick, which one doesn't belong? So if I look at the tiles, which one of these, oops, just hit the sheet, doesn't belong? All right, so if you look at A, B, C, D, they're all different patterns and different shapes, um, different types of shapes. A lot of them have, this is a five-sided shape, this is a five-sided shape if I look at it. One, two, three, four, five. Um, this one, you've got an eight-sided shape and a square in all of it. And then this one, you have an, a bunch of five-sided shapes and a bunch of squares and then a bunch of um, kind of space, okay? So if I were looking at this, if I said which one doesn't belong, my first inclination would be to go to this one for D, okay? I would say this one probably doesn't belong because it has spaces. All these other ones don't have any spaces. In A, all the pentagons and its five-sided sided shapes are all put together. There's no spaces. These are also pentagons, believe it or not. They don't look like it. It looks like a flower shape, but each is a five-sided figure. And again, it's put together so that there's no spaces in it. Same with here. My squares take up the spaces. If I look at the eight-sided figure, um, my spaces are actually a shape, okay? So I have got an um, octagon, which is an eight-sided shape, and then I've got a square, which is a four-sided shape. Um, so that has no spaces. This one, I have the pentagon and the square, which is the same as this one, but then I've got where it's there's no way to make those into shapes. So if I were looking at this, I would probably say that D would be the one that doesn't belong because it has spaces, okay? It has spaces between the shapes, okay? There's no considerable figure in there, okay? All right, so pretty easy, I just looked at that. If I wanted to look at other things, which one doesn't belong, okay, I could also pick this one because this one has five-sided shapes, this one has five-sided shapes, this one has five-sided shapes. So if I looked at it that way, C doesn't belong, okay? Um, my first inclination would be to go to this one, but that doesn't mean that that's the only right answer. So this doesn't have any five-sided shapes. So I could say that this one doesn't belong. So do you see how there's not exactly, it depends on what you're looking for, an exact answer for these, okay? Um, all right, so we're gonna go on to the next thing. That was just kind of all warm up to see how we're doing on here. All right, so this says, it says you're gonna look at pattern A or pattern B, okay? We'll look at both real quick. In your pattern, which shape covers more of the plane? The blue rhombuses, and we're gonna pretend like they're colored. Um, so the blue rhombuses, rhombuses are your four-sided figures. Your red trapezoids, which are still darker, but their um, trapezoids are also four-sided figures, but see how the rhombuses, all the sides are the same, and the trapezoid has a pair of parallel sides, okay? I tried to color them on here, but it didn't show up real great in the coloring. And then you have green triangles, okay? So if I wanna know what figured out the most or take up the most shape. What I noticed on here, and I kind of outlined it, but you can't see it very well, is that, let's see if I can find a peek. If I look at just one of these, this is a hexagon, okay? If I kind of split it up, they're all identical. So here's one hexagon, here's another hexagon, do, 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 and they're all identical to each other. So I'm just gonna analyze one of these. So I would say that one of my hexagons here has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven triangles. Okay. It has one, two, three, four rhombuses. And it has one, two, three trapezoids. Okay, so if I'm just looking at that shape, that's what I'm getting out of here, okay? If I look at the bottom shape, it's gonna have the exact same thing. It has one, two, three trapezoids. So it doesn't matter which one I'm looking at, actually. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven triangles. And it also has one, two, three, four rhombuses, okay? So they're both 
going to have the exact same thing. That's why it didn't matter which one we looked at. So we're just going to stick with this one because the second one's going to be the same. All right, so if I look at this, okay, I've got... So let's figure out what each thing does, first of all. So if I look at just triangles, so let's figure out if I made everything into triangles, okay? So one rhombus, if I split it in half, would give me two triangles, okay? Does that make sense? If I looked at a trapezoid, one trapezoid, if I split it into, I could have a rhombus and a triangle, and I know that rhombuses are two triangles because we just did that so this equals three triangles all right so i have seven total triangles if i split everything if i split my rhombuses okay i would say that um, if i have four rhombuses that means it was eight triangles okay so if i did this this equals eight triangles, because each rhombus is two triangles, okay? So far, so good? So already I know that if I had four rhombuses, I have more rhombus area than I have triangle area, because this would take up eight triangles, this takes up seven, so my triangles are out. My triangles are not gonna take up the most space. All right, if I look at trapezoids, each trapezoid is three triangles, one, two, three triangles. I have three trapezoids, each one has three triangles, so three times three is nine. So this would need nine triangles, okay? So again, if I made everything into what a triangle would be, this has seven, this has eight, this has nine. So my trapezoids are gonna take up the most area, okay? That would make up the most triangles. I could have done this, make them all rhombuses and figure out how many rhombuses there were. I could have made them all trapezoids, but triangles were the easiest thing because I can split them each up into equal amounts of triangles, okay? So I'm gonna take the smallest shape and try to figure out what I can do with it. So if I did the same thing down here on the bottom one, same thing. If I figured out how many triangles there are, I could figure out how many rhombuses there are, okay? If I, um, so I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven triangles. Each triangle is, two triangles make one rhombus, so this is one rhombus two rhombuses, three and a half rhombuses. Well, I had four of them. So again, the rhombus is one. If I turn this into a triangle and a rhombus, okay, this would give me one, two, let's see, let's do it this way. This is a rhombus and a triangle, rhombus and a triangle, rhombus and a triangle. This would give me one, two, three rhombuses, four and a half, okay? So I'd have this little bit left over um, so that I still know that the trapezoid took up more area because it was more rhombuses. So I kind of make it all one shape and figure out who had the most of that shape. All right, seems a little bit confusing, but it's a lot easier than trying to figure out um, the area of them right now. All right, so hopefully that made a little bit of sense. We're gonna move on to, if we have this, how do we know what takes up the most area? So we're gonna do the same type of thing. I'm gonna take one of these squares, okay? I have one, two, three, four, five large squares. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten medium squares. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten small squares. All right, if I'm looking at which takes up the most area, I have the exact same number of small squares as medium squares, and the small square takes up way less area than a medium square, so my small's out. My small will not take up the most area. So I'm looking at which takes up the most area, five large squares or 10 medium squares. All right, here's how we're gonna do this. If I looked at this, okay, one small, one rhombus, it's a rhombus, it's a square and a rhombus actually, was four small, right? Does that make sense? So one big or one medium, I'm gonna make them all small squares, equals four small. We already know the small's out. So if I make everything small squares, I'm gonna see who has the most small squares. All right, if I split this into 
room. I'm going to try and do this a little bit even, okay? So I would have one medium, right? This is the same as this, believe it or not. This, <laughs> this and this are exactly the same. And then I would have one, one, two, three small. So one large is equal to one medium and one, two, three, four, five small. Okay? So that means five large, one, two, three, four, five large is equal to five medium, I'm just timesing everything by five, plus 25 small. All right, so right now I'm gonna figure out how many mediums um, would 25 small be, or I could say how many smalls is five mediums, okay? So I know each medium one was equal to four small do it this way. Okay. So this would equal five times four, 20 small. Oh, my pen's dying. Five large would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine small. So each one large is nine small. So that's 45 small. I'll just get a different color pen here. All right, so if I looked at it that way, all right, I've got 45 small. Five large is 45 small. So let's do this up here, okay? So five large equals 45 small. Okay, because I took one, two, three, four, five, um, six, seven, eight, nine. If I split this into all smalls, I get nine for each one. Nine times five is 45. All right, if I look at this, I've got four smalls in each um, square. So 10 squares is equal to one, two, three, four times 10 is 40 small. Make sense? So it looks like I have more of the large ones than I have the medium ones. Because this would make 20 or 45 small squares. This would make 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 times 4, 40 small. There's my winner. I have 45. I could fit 45 in here and I could fit 40 in here. Okay. So what I did is I made them all small squares and figured out which one took up the most space. Because I already know 10 small was not my problem. It was, am I going to have more of the medium ones or more of the large ones? Okay. So even though I had more of the amount of medium squares, this took up the most area. All right. Let's move on. All right. So this is pretty easy. It says draw three different quadrilaterals, each with an area of 12 square units. Well, a quadrilateral, if I think about a rectangle, okay, or a square, or um, it's just base times height. So any quadrilateral is base times height, okay? And we're going to use 90 degree angles, so it'll just be side length times width. So the area is going to be length times width because we're going to use rectangles. All right, so if I looked at this, I want to cover 12 square units, which means what times what equals 12? So I could say 12 is equal to... 2 times 6, 12 is equal to 3 times 4, what else could 12 be equal to? 12 is equal to 1 times 12, okay? So that gives me three different things that are going to give me an area of 12, so let's test it out. Let's do the 2 times 6. If I did 2 squares times 6 squares, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, yep. Okay, did that give me 12 squares? It sure did, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. Each one was two. Okay, so this is 12 square units. What if I did three squares by four squares? Let's do that. Oops. 
So if I did 3, 1, 2, 3 by 1, 2, 3, 4, so all I did is look for two numbers that multiplied to get 12. Again, if I count them, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. All right, and then if I did 1 times 12, I just kind of went with the easy number there. Let's do 1 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, not the best rectangle. Um, but they also gave me 12 square units, 12 square units, because there's 12 squares in there. So it gave me um, what I needed for this. Okay. All right. So um, that was a pretty easy thing to do. You know, I could do it um, where they weren't equal. I could also do that, but I'm going to do the easiest ones I can find if I'm going to do that. Okay. All right. So moving on. This says, use the copies of the rectangles to, sorry, my phone went out there. Um, use the copies of the rectangles um, to show how it could tile the plane and it could not tile the plane. Now, to tile the plane, I don't want any spaces, okay? If I'm not tiling the plane, I'm going to have spaces. So I'm going to do this pretty easy way. This is one, two, three, four, five, six square units. So if I kept this going two by three, I'm not going to fill the plane. So one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two. So I could make all these rectangles the exact same and keep going, okay? I'm just going to keep going down. Okay, so if I kept going across, I'm not going to have any spaces here. So I could tile the plane like this, okay? I do all of mine that are two by three. I'm just stacking them. All right, that tiled the whole plane. I didn't have any spaces because there was my original. All right, what's a way that I could do it where I would have spaces? Well, let's do this. Let's say, what if we went this way? If we went three by two, okay? So I'm gonna do two by three this way. Three by two this way. Two by three this way. One, two, three by two this way. Okay, and I kept this pattern going. Where's my problem? I already have a problem here. I can't fill this because it doesn't fit in my rectangle. Okay, so I would not be able to tile the plane doing mine one um, horizontal and one vertical. Okay because I would have all these spaces left over. All right. Okay, so this one says, in the, if the area of the shape is 24 square units, which of these statements is true about the area? So we're gonna select all that apply. This says the area could be found by counting the number of squares that touch the edge of the shape. Okay, so if I'm touching the edge of the shape, um. That means I'm just counting the squares that touch the edge of the shape. Which ones touch the edge of the shape? These all do. Oh, I'm a color highlighter. This one does. This one does. These all do. They're touching an edge. But those ones don't. They don't touch the edge of the shape, so that will not work. Okay, because this only tells me that there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I guess this kind of touched an edge. Corner, so we'll count you. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 squares. That one does not work. This one says it takes 24 grid squares to cover the shape without um, gaps or overlaps. Okay. So 24 to cover everything without gaps or overlaps. Okay. So there's no gaps or overlaps in there. So that one's true. There's 24 squares if I count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 22, 24. So that one does work. If I were filling up this whole thing, it would not work though, okay? So I can't go six across. So if I said, if I want to keep this pattern going, would it cover everything? No. But right now, yeah, this covers everything. There's no gaps. 
The area can be found by multiplying the side lengths that are six and four units. Well, that's kind of weird. Why would I do six and four? Okay. Well, here is why I would do that. Because if I, let's see, because six times four does give me 24. Okay, so let's say we're going to do this. If I took, how do I want to do this? If I took these two, let's make a rectangle. So if I took these two off and added them on here and here, okay? And I just took those off so that it is one, two, three, four, two, three, four. Actually, that gives me five. I want six. Um, i trying to remember what I did here. I did this, if I move this, okay, all of this over to this side, okay, I would have one square left over, but if I kind of, it's, it's hard to kind of describe this because I would have to rearrange my squares, I know, um, totally forgot what I was going to say, I would have to rearrange my squares so that there were 24, and I can actually do this with this shape, okay? I guess I would probably do it this way instead. I'm kind of thinking as I'm going through this. If I had 12 here, okay, then if I went one, two, three, four down, that would give me six. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. If I went here and then I did one, two, three, four, two, three, four, and I make a big rectangle here. That would be six times four, I think is the way I was trying to show it. Okay? That's a disaster. All right, so that one does work. The area can be found by counting the grid squares inside the shape. That is very true. There are 24 squares in there, and the area is 24. This one says the area can be found by adding four times three and six times two. So what this was actually doing, and I kind of wrote all over the squares, so it might be a little weird. But what this is actually doing is showing that if I, my original rectangle was this, okay, and that is one, two, three, four times three. My second rectangle was this one, which was two times one, two, three, four, five, six. This is 12. This is 12. Do they equal 24? Yes. So that one does work too. So what I did is I just took the areas of the squares and split them up. And added them to it. That one didn't work, did I? All right, we're getting there. Last but not least on this one. Okay. All right, this one says, here are two copies of the same figure. Show two different ways for finding the area of the shaded region. All the angles are right angles. That's important because that'll make rectangles for me. So let's show should we? Let's do vertical and horizontal. If I did this way, okay. This would be two times six, so that's 12 square units. This would be three times two plus three is five. This gives me 15 square units. And this also gives me 15 square units, five times three, okay? What if I do it another way? Let's go across, okay? This one, I would do one times two. It gives me two square units. This would be two times. Now I gotta figure this out. If this whole thing is 10, this much is five, that means this much is five. So this would give me 10 square units, two times five. And then this one gives me three times 10, which is 30 square units. All right, set them up. This would be 15 square units plus 15 square units plus two square units. Oh, not two, 12, sorry. Plus 12 square units gives me 30 plus two, 12 is 42 units squared. Or square units, same thing. This one I had 30 plus 10 plus two. 30 plus 10 plus two, I got 42 units squared. So yeah, I could do it either way. I could do it up and down. I could do it across. 
All right, so this is the last one. This is what you would do the more math with than squares because it'd be very hard to do these with squares, though you could because you're looking at three quarters of an inch, okay? What we did is we said that um, we know that the area is length times width because it is a rectangle. This is saying the length is seven, the width is three fourths. So if I did seven, times three fourths, I kind of did that backwards. Remember, you gotta make them both fractions and you just multiply across. So this gives me 21 fourths, which if I change it back to a mixed number, remember how we did this? We said four goes into 21, five whole times, five times four is 20, so I had one left over out of four. So this would be unit squared or inches squared, same thing. All right, if I did two and a half times two and a half, for the square, fractions. We gotta change them to mixed numbers first, okay? So I would do two times two is four, plus one is five over two. Because if I, what I'm doing is I'm changing it all into halves. So if each one is a half, two halves, two, one whole would be two halves. So two holes would be four halves, plus another half gives me five halves. That's why I do it that way, okay? Times five halves, okay? That gives me five times five is 25. Two times two is four. And you just multiply across with fractions. And then I change that. I can already tell that this one's gonna be bigger because this is 21 fourths, this is 25 fourths. 25 is bigger than 21 because they have the same denominator. But four goes into 25 six times. Six times four is 24, so I still had one left over. So this one is the bigger one. He wins the race. All right? All right, so if you have any questions, make sure you let me know. And um, good luck with everything tonight, and I hope you have a great night.